everyone, we are live. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Mallory. Unfortunately, none of the critters wanted to come out and say hi. I tried, I tried persuading him with food, but tonight was just not the night. So instead, I brought out a replacement. So this is a tarantula, and today we are reading a Walk in the Desert. And in fact, there are tarantulas that live in the desert. Uh, there are in the United States, we have the desert tarantula, and the females are typically a little bit bigger than the males. They're not this big, don't worry. And the females are usually like a brownish color or tan, while the males are a little bit smaller. They have longer legs, and they're a little bit of a darker color. And what's really cool is during certain times of the year, we call it the tarantula migration. It's not really a migration. What it is are is the males are coming out searching for females. The females stay in their little burrows and the males come around looking to see if they can find the perfect mate. Um, tarantulas in the desert are nocturnal. And what's really unique about their hairs is that they have multiple uses. Hi, Willow. Thanks for coming back. Today we're learning about desert animals and tarantulas. So I have a pet tarantula, but the tarantula did not want to come out today. So we are just learning about, um, this is the replacement. And if there's anybody else on there that's with a kiddo, please let me know their name so I can say hello. I always love hearing from them. So tarantulas are carnivores, which means they eat meat, uh, particularly insects, but some of them can get big enough where they do eat things like small lizards and mammals, uh, but mainly it's insects. They're actually really good for the environment. One of the predators of the tarantula is called the tarantula hawk, um, which is a type of wasp. And what it does is when it's ready to lay eggs, it will find a tarantula, it will paralyze the tarantula so it can no longer move, then it will drag the tarantula to its own burrow and will lay eggs in it. And as the eggs hatch and develop, they start munching on the tarantula and that is how they get their nourishment. But tarantulas are actually really, really cool too. They have specialized hairs that can feel vibration. So when something does come close enough, like say a human, it can scurry out of the way because spiders really don't want to mess with humans. We're big, we can hurt them, they know this, and so they're gonna wanna get away from us. So don't think that just because you see a tarantula, keep your distance if you don't want to investigate, but typically they're not going to mess with you. Many people are a little bit unsure about the fangs, but really it's the hair on the back side that you have to worry about with um, New World tarantulas. So tarantulas in the United States. The reason why is they use their back legs, hopefully I don't break this, and they rub their hind side and all these tiny little hairs come off and they get into the eyes and the mouth of the predators. It's not, it does not feel good. And so that's how they are able to protect themselves and they can get away. But if you guys have any other questions about tarantulas, let me know while we're reading, but let's get to story time. Okay, a walk in the desert. Oh, because we don't have any animals, we can go ahead and have a really fun little banner. Okay, a walk in the desert. Just before dawn, a kit fox pads quietly across the dry ground. She spies a kangaroo rat beneath a cactus. The fox springs and catches her pup's next meal. She is lucky. The time for hunting is nearly ended. Sunbeams are flickering over the landscape as the sun rises. Chut, 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 chut. The rattling call of a cactus wren breaks the silence. The fox heads for her den as another day of the desert begins. See a little fox. Little gray fox, I think. Does the word desert make you think of a hot wasteland of sand? Is it a place where almost nothing lives or grows? A few deserts are like that, but most have more stones than sand, and many deserts are actually full of life. Deserts are the driest places on earth. They are found where rain is scarce and the air is very dry. In Western North America, deserts stretch from Idaho south to Mexico. The largest are the Great Basin, the Mojave, the Sonoran, and the Chihuahuan deserts. Whoa. So when we think of deserts, we kind of think of that usually. But usually, many deserts are actually like that. 
And when you're done with this too, if you guys want on YouTube, there's many, many uh, little types of quizzes and videos that you can check out that talk all about desert animal adaptations. Deserts are surrounded by other kinds of landscapes. If you travel north, you'll see grasslands and forest. North of the forest is a cold treeless plain called a tundra. Tundra, forests and grasslands and deserts make up Earth's main land zones. Scientists call these different areas biomes. Each biome has a different type of climate. The climate is an area's usual pattern of weather over a long period of time. Every biome is home to a special group of plants. The plants are well suited to living in the biome's climate and to growing in the soil found there. Every biome is also home to a special group of animals. In one way or another, the animals depend on the plants to survive. Many of the biome's animals eat plants. Other animals eat the plant eaters. So you can see all those different colors represent different biomes. Woo! So again, a biome is a definitely just a piece of area that has a special climate. All plants and animals in a biome form a community. In that community, every living thing depends on other community members for its survival. So much like our neighborhood, right? We rely on each other to work together. A biome's climate, soil, plants, and animals are all connected this way. So there's a coyote. What do you think the coyote might depend on? Kangaroo rats, right? And the kangaroo rats rely on the seeds from the plants, so they're all connected. Deserts have a very dry climate. They do get a little rain, but it doesn't come regularly. One storm might drench a desert with several inches of rain. It might not rain again for a few months or even years. I see. Some deserts are cold, but most are hot. During the day, hot deserts are the hottest places on Earth. Clouds are rare in desert skies. There is nothing to block the sun's scorching rays. But when the sun goes down, deserts quickly cool off. Nighttime temperatures can be freezing cold. Wow. So those little things are not fun. They're called choya, and their spines are crazy. They stick straight, but as soon as they hit moisture, like say in your skin, they'll curve. And so they create little hooks in your skin, and it's so hard to get out. It's hard to imagine that anything could live in such a harsh place. Yet most deserts are home to many living things. Let's take a walk in the desert and see what life is like here in early summer. The landscape glows in the morning sun. You're in the middle of a rocky plain full of strange looking plants. Many are cactus plants or cacti. Most cacti don't have leaves. They have thick green stems covered in sharp spines. The spines protect cacti from being eaten by desert animals. They also shade the stems from the sun. So for many, many years, scientists thought that spines were meant to protect the cactus, but then they noticed, wow, there's a lot of animals who can still go on the cactus. And they found out that all those spines create little tiny amounts of shade on the plant and it actually cools them off. Pretty fascinating. And today we did earlier, also on Facebook Live, you'll see we did an activity where you can see how desert plants survive. Cacti come in many shapes and sizes. At your feet are tiny round cacti. They look like pin cushions. Next to them are pancake shaped prickly pears. Chubby barrel cacti dot the landscape. They grow about knee high. Choyas are taller with many spiny branches. You do not want to mess with a choya for sure. Towering over everything are the giant saguaros. They can grow as tall as a telephone pole. Saguaro cactus can live, grow very slowly, but they can live to be over 200 years old. Look at that. Oh, where's this? Enclosure just went off. Very cool. Gosh. Bend down and pick up a handful of soil. 
It's so pebbly and dry, it trickles through your fingers. Desert soil contains many things that plants need to grow, but after a rain, it dries out very fast. Desert plants must be able to soak up rainwater very quickly. They must save every precious drop. Many cacti have roots that spread out just under the soil's surface. When it rains, the roots soak up the water before the soil dries it up. You guys lost broadcast? Has anybody else having that problem? It says I'm still live. We'll keep going to see what happens. Cacti aren't the only desert plants. Mesquite trees grow here too. Both have tiny leathery leaves. Small leaves lose less water in desert air than large leaves would. Let me know if you guys get back on. A spring thunderstorm soaks up the desert a few weeks ago. The heavy rain woke millions of sleeping seeds. Everywhere you look, poppies, daisies, snapdragons, and other wildflowers bloom. Their bright, their bright blossoms of red, yellow, orange, and purple dance in the breeze. But in another week or two, the flowers will wither and die. Their seeds will fall to the ground. There the seeds will wait, maybe for a year or more, until the heavy rains come again. Very pretty. Are you guys back on? Many of the cacti are blooming too. Bright waxy flowers sprout from their tops and branches. Hear the buzzing and the humming? Cactus flowers and wildflowers attract flies, <laughs> attract bees, butterflies, and wasps. Jewel-colored hummingbirds stop in midair to dip their long bills into the blossoms. All these animals drink the sweet nectar that the flowers make. Inside the flowers are tiny yellow grains called pollen. Pollen sticks to animals as they sip nectar. As the animals flip from flower to flower, they spread pollen from one plant to another. This process is called pollination. When plants are pollinated, they can make fruits and seeds. From seeds, new plants will grow. Look at those pretty poppies. Are you back on, Diana? You seem to be my number one commenter. Desert plants provide many animals with food and water. Here comes a desert tortoise. It shuffles slowly along the stops and stops often to rest. The tortoise stretches its long neck to nibble a wildflower. Tortoises rarely drink. They get nearly all their water they need from plants they eat. Is that really pretty? I love desert tortoises. Cacti also provide homes for desert animals. Halfway down a nearby saguaro thick stem, a Gila woodpecker pecks a hole in the juicy flesh. It is making a nest for its eggs. Woodpeckers have nested in this cactus for many years, so they've made many holes in it. This is one of the animals where the spines don't bother it, huh? Fantastic. I'm glad you guys are back. Elf owls are the smallest owls in the world. They are about the size of a sparrow. Can you imagine how cute that would be? Other creatures have moved into some of the old wo woodpecker holes. A pair of fly catchers lives in one. Another is home to a hive of honeybees. And, peck and peeking out of still another hole is an elf owl. It has white eyebrows and a fierce yellow eyes. Not far from the, from the saguaro, you see a very different kind of desert home. Jammed between a dead cactus and a fallen tree is a huge mound of tangled twigs. It's the nest of a wood rat. I like wood rats. In San Diego, where I was born, there's a lots of wood rats that you can see. Wood rats are also called pack rats. They use anything they can find to build enormous nests. A wood rat's nest might be made of sticks, rocks, leaves, cactus spines, or even bones. It may be as tall as a person and just as wide. The nest protects the wood rat from foxes, hawks, and other predators. It is also a cool place to hide from the hot sun. 
Wood rat nibbles on sweet fruit of prickly pear. They're kind of cute though, huh? Many desert animals are nocturnal. They are active only at night when it's cooler. Nocturnal desert dwellers spend their day in burrows, dens, and other sheltered places. The kangaroo rat and the kit fox are nocturnal. They stay underground until the sun goes down. But some desert animals are active during the day. Insects are on the move everywhere. Columns of ants march across the ground. Colorful beetles crawl up and down stems. Grasshoppers spring from leaf to leaf. Insect-eating spiders are busy, too. They spin silken webs among the cactus vines. See all the ants? It's cool how when you look closely and you like, for instance, ants, you can see so many neat things. And ants communicate by scent. So you can do a lot of really cool experiments. We might have to do some really neat demonstrations in the nature class soon. The sun has climbed higher in the clear blue sky. Can you feel the heat? Desert lizards don't seem to mind. Their tough, scaly skin seals water inside their bodies and keeps them from drying out. Lizard, the lizards rest on rocks, hunt insects, and cling to cactus stems. In one small patch of the desert, you could see a tiny skink. Chunky chalk walla, spiny horn lizards, and lumbering gila monsters. So there is a little, they call them horny toads too, or horn lizards. But they dine on ants. And when they get really upset or scared, they'll shoot blood out of their eyes. Pretty crazy. We are almost done. Suddenly, something streaks across your path. It's Speedy Lizard. And right on its heels is a roadrunner. Roadrunners can fly, but these desert birds prefer to run after lizards and other small animals they hunt. A roadrunner's feet have two toes that point forward and two that point backwards. This shape helps the bird grip to the ground. Let's see. That's the, there we go. There it is. Pretty neat little bird. Roadrunners have long, strong legs. They can run as fast as many lizards can. In fact, this time the bird is faster. The roadrunner catches the lizard by its tail and swallows it in one gulp. Desert jackrabbits have longer ears than rabbits from other biomes. Long ears release heat and help the jackrabbit stay cool. Nearby, a jackrabbit looks for plants to nibble on. Jackrabbits are even faster than roadrunners. They can outrun almost everything in the desert. They can even outrun coyotes, well, most of the time. Coyotes eat rabbits when they can catch them, but they will eat just about anything from birds to lizards to berries. To find underground water, they dig holes in dry stream beds. Coyotes can survive almost anywhere. By noon, even the coyotes are panting. It's well over 100 degrees. The sun is a fireball overhead. Nearly all the daytime animals move into the shade of rocks and cacti during the hottest part of the day. So that's a great adaptation, right? When it's really hot, you rest all day, and then you can come out and play all night. Take a tip from the animals. Find a place out in the sun to rest. Just be careful where you sit. Scorpions often lurk in crevices or under rocks during the day. A scorpion's tail has a stinger filled with poison. Few kinds of scorpions can kill a person, but the sting of any scorpion is very painful. So a scorpion uses its large pinchers to catch spiders and other small prey. Its stinger is used mostly for defense. A mother scorpion carries her babies around on the back until they can survive on their own. How cool is that, huh? Watch out for hiding rattlesnakes and coral snakes too. Their poison can be deadly. You don't want to get within striking distance of either one. Heat waves shimmer above the landscape. The leaves of the mesquite trees curl up. Curled leaves lose less water in the hot, dry air. The desert is very quiet. Most of the birds are silent. They seem to be waiting for the sun's fierce heat to fade. A rattlesnake's rattle is made up of rows of large, dry scales. 
So every time a rattlesnake sheds, it gets a new little knob on its tail. But you can't tell how old a rattlesnake is based on its tail because sometimes food is really great and so they eat a lot, so they shed multiple times. And then sometimes the food is not a lot and so they don't grow as fast. Gradually, the sun moves lower in the sky. As shadows grow longer, the temperature starts to drop. Desert birds begin to sing again. As, sunset, as the sun sets, coyotes call to each other. Barking and yelping, they join voices in an eerie wailing song. The desert day is over. The cool night is about to begin. Birds, lizards, and other daytime animals retreat to snug nests and safe hiding places. They will all sleep the night away. As darkness falls, the nocturnal animals begin to stir. Ah, tarantula. Snakes slither into the open. They are ready to track down rats, rabbits, and birds that nest on the ground. Scorpions scuttle around. They search for crickets, spiders, and small sleeping lizards. Many-legged centipedes crawl out of their nooks and crannies to hunt for insects. Hairy tarantulas creep out of the holes in the ground. They look scary, but they are dangerous only to insects and other creatures they eat. Bats flutter out of caves. They look like dark shadows against the night sky. Some seek the sweet nectar of cactus flowers. Others hunt for flying insects. So that's a tarantula. And we don't have any vampire bats in our desert, so you don't have to worry about any of the bats coming to suck your blood. And less than 1% of all bats have rabies, so you don't have to worry about them trying to bite you or get in your hair. An elf owl whistles softly as it flies out from its Aurora hotel. It glides silently through the cool night air. The owl, the owl dives to the ground to catch a small snake with its sharp claws. Up from their burrows come kangaroo rats. All night they bound around on long hind legs, noses twitching, see, searching for seeds. Wood rats also leave their nests to look for food. Kit foxes quietly stalk rats and mice, and maybe a sleeping roadrunner too. Wait, hear that? Soft grunting sounds are coming from a clump of bushes. There's a strong musky odor in the air too. Peccaries are near. Peccaries are pig-like animals with coarse, bristly hair. There's your kangaroo rat, and there's your peccary. They don't look very nice, huh? During the day, peccaries sleep in the shade, but at night, they travel in noisy groups. They poke the, dro the dry soil with their long snouts, eating roots and tender plants. One of their favorite fruits is prickly pear cactus. Peccaries don't seem to mind the prickly pear sharp spines. The scent of peccaries can attract large desert hunters, bobcats and mountain lions high in the shadows, waiting for animals to pass by. Then in a flash, they spring out and pounce on their prey. Look at that, very cool mountain lion. We got two more pages. As the hours pass, the cool night air turns cold. The temperature may drop 60 degrees or more between sunset and sunrise. The fur coats of foxes, bobcats, and rats protect them from the cold. Owls have fluffy feathers to keep them warm. All night long, the desert is a busy place. It is full of slithering, rustling, whispering sounds as animals move about. By the light of the stars and the moon, they fly and hop and run and pounce. Eventually, the, ro the rosy glow of dawn lights up the eastern sky. Owls and bats return to their roosts. Kit foxes and, kangaroos rat and kangaroo rats retreat to underground burrows. Snakes and scorpions go back to their hiding places. And when the cactus wren calls out at sunrise, the cycle of the life in the desert begins all over again. The end. Can you guys tell me what your favorite desert animal is? I'm not sure what mine would be. I think either the bats or the tarantulas. I really like them. But if you like this book, um, it's called, it's the Biomes of North America. We'll probably be reading more of these too because there's about a series of, I think there's six of them. And they're really good. 
So if you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. If you think this was a little too long, also let me know. But that's it. If you guys want to learn more about desert cool creatures, uh, again, on YouTube, they have um, on the Fast Facts videos, we have a bunch of different animal adaptation videos. And then also today on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, you can check out how to make an activity on figure out how cacti are able to keep all their water inside and not evaporate it in the hot sun. But that is all for today. Thank you guys very, very much for sticking with me. That was kind of a long story. I apologize for that. But I guess I will see you tomorrow evening. You guys have a great night. Thank you again for joining me. Bye. Oh, good. I'm glad you did, Diana. And bye, Willow. Have a good night. There's a big a bit of a lag, so I'll stay on just in case. Anybody else wants to mention? All right. You guys have a great night. Bye.